I mean, this is absolutely setting somebody up for complete disaster. Look, I, I want to be honest with everyone. I started using ketamine in the emergency department for conscious sedations, and it was incredibly effective. Yet, if I ever give it to a patient, they are on a monitor, and I am observing every vital sign, making sure their airway is patent, just like you as an anesthesiologist. So when I started hearing about ketamine being used this prolifically, it scared the out of me. And yet now I feel like we're talking about it, well, this dose is perfectly benign. Can you talk a little bit about this, this concept of microdosing? Is it benign? And where do we draw the line? Because it seems to me a drug that I treat with so much respect as a trained physician, now people are using it out at parties. No, it's, it's completely insane. But let's talk about the microdosing. Obviously, what we're doing now for depression is basically considered microdosing, right? Yeah. And Dr. Mandel will agree. You're using about 0.5 milligrams per kilogram, where in anesthesia, you're using three or more milligrams per kilogram. So you can tell it's already a very, very tiny sub-anesthetic dose. So that really is considered microdosing. But regardless of the fact, they shouldn't be doing this by themselves. They shouldn't be self-administering ketamine, right? So daily microdosing is a very bad idea. It needs supervision regardless. What are the risks of addiction with this medication and what are the long-term side effects if someone is abusing ketamine? Well, the good news is, is that most of the research shows that if ketamine is given appropriately, and that means following the APA guidelines that were put forth, following like university health standards up in Canada, that sort of protocol, the studies show that the risk of addiction is very minimal. However, we absolutely know that people will abuse ketamine because it's a dissociative. A dissociative means you kind of leave reality for a little while. So it's the perfect addictive substance for someone that's suffering from a psychological issue. If you're at home and you need to escape, you know what, you take a squirt of ketamine and everything goes away, it disappears. So long-term use, we know that it affects memory in a negative way if you're using it and, and abusing it. And listen, I, I gotta say something else. You know, in psychiatry, I often hear this insulin comparison and, and I, doc, Dr. Mandel had brought this up and I respect everything that Dr. Mandel is doing and I give him a ton of kudos for, you know, trying to regulate this because that's the most important thing that we have right now is regulation because this is a promising treatment. But we're talking about a medicine that people feel when they take it and feel when it wears off. This is how I look at treatment-resistant depression. You are in the middle of a storm and you cannot see the way out. Ketamine gets you out of that storm for a few weeks, maybe a month, maybe longer. And in that time period, you can put together collateral resources. You can start therapy, you can get back to work, you can start cognitive behavioral work, you can see therapists, you can talk to your family, you can get going again, you can start going to the gym again. It gets you out of the storm. I don't think that this should be promoted as something that you're gonna to need to be on for the rest of your life, and you're gonna to have to keep coming back to the ketamine clinic to getting monthly boosters. That's just my opinion. Um, I see too much of a correlation between benzodiazepines, stimulants, opiates, I think it can get you out of the storm, and that's where we need to keep it for now until further research is done. Well, and these are all wonderful points. Unfortunately, we are out of time. <laughs> Jeff, I wanna thank you for opening thank up you, about Jeff. your experience, and, and um, Dr. Mandel, thank you for sharing your experience in your clinic, and certainly Dr. Sportelli. Look, I think everyone now realizes the potential for abuse. We're going to have a list of information on our website if ketamine, is a treatment that you've ever considered. We're gonna have sort of a list, a checklist of things to look for so that you can go to a reputable place. And also remember, unlike Leslie, who was doing this just for an investigation, you should not be rolling into a ketamine clinic and saying, hey, I wanna try this out and making up <laughs> symptoms because it yeah. could be a drug of abuse, it could be dangerous. And Leslie, that's where I credit you. You keep, you keep doing these investigations where you are quite literally proving that the only purpose of a lot of these things or these clinics is to make money and they don't care about you. And so make sure, especially if you have a mental health diagnosis, that you are in the hands of someone who truly cares about you and your well-being. So very well done. Thank Excellent. you.